should have felt intimidated. But instead, I was angry, sick, stunned, maybe. They put me in a small concrete cell. The walls painted blue, exactly like something from a film. And they do this thing where they pretend they don't understand you, but you know they do. They're just being evasive. I keep getting no man, no man. I'm thinking I didn't want to come, but felt so badly that I had to. Now that I'm here, I'm told nothing. It cost me like 700 pounds, and this whole fucking country is just empty. And nothing is the way it was supposed to be if I'd come here to see you. The police are all polite and accommodating at first. But once I've explained why I'm here, the walls go up. They don't offer me chai anymore, and half of them are struck dumb. I'm so ill-equipped to deal with this drama. You were supposed to be my guide. And I don't know how to get around without you here. On the third day, I reach my limit. Slap the table a few times, say, if I leave this building, it will be to go to the embassy. I'm talking shit. I don't know where the embassy is. But it works. I feel like a dick, but you have to use the tools at your disposal, and being a dick is mine. They tell me someone's coming from the coroner's office. They're gentle with me. Like, now they see I'm on the edge of something dangerous and bad. They put me in the blue room again. This time, I'm joined by a man called Mr. Nath. And a policeman who yesterday could barely stretch to know, ma'am, but who is now an interpreter. They tell me your work colleagues were quick to report your disappearance, as you were resolutely never late. Breaking into your flat when you didn't answer. They knew before they opened the door that you were gone. They found you on your bed. They could tell it had been too long that you could not be resuscitated. coroner locks eyes with me. I do not cry. They gave a ruling of accidental death. There was no note, after all. But there was some ambiguity. He's not comfortable sharing the method with me, as if he thinks I'm going to dash off and do it myself. But he says it's possible you interfered with an appliance to deliberately cause carbon monoxide poisoning. It's a relatively painless death. You'd fallen asleep and stayed there. And here's what I learned. That knowing something on the inside and hearing it aloud are just symptoms of the same sorry fact. That you killed yourself because you weren't prepared to fight. You let me fight for you. You'd rely on me. You'd, you'd do for me. You'd marry me, even. But you'd never fight for me. Afterwards, I somehow got home. Everyone all helpful and sympathetic smiles. I didn't think until I was back within my own walls. 
And there I found the letter. Airmail, postmark, cursive. I haven't opened it yet. I don't want to hear what you have to say until I'm ready to not hate you for it. But now I'm just mad at you for leaving me before we were done. And when I'm not mad at you, I'm thinking about your little soul still sitting in your flat wondering what's going on.